Mm. President Obama's final State of the Union address is tonight. How do you think he's going to try to define his legacy? I think what he's going to try to do is talk about where the country was when uh, he took over and what's happened over the past seven years, and then quickly transition into what that means for the future and the choice before Americans in the 2016 election. Do they want to keep on the path, uh, by and large, that Barack Obama has been on with a, a Democratic president, or do they want to switch over uh, into Republican hands? I think that's going to be the big battle for 2016, and this is his opportunity to sort of frame that question and to defend uh, what he's done in the past and how that might set up the United States for a better future. It's been interesting to watch. His staff has been releasing different points that are going to take place tonight. A lot of times those things are kept secret. What, what do we expect to hear from him? Well, I think one of the things they've done is lower expectations. Almost everything you've heard from them <laughs> up to this point is what he's not going to say, uh, how he's not going to talk so much about this or so much about that. My guess is that they've got a, a speech that's a little shorter and a little punchier than usual. Um, and uh, I do think you're going to see some, some little bit of policy in there, uh, some, some energy from the president uh, about what he likes to call the fourth quarter of his presidency. You know, if you listen to the, all of the candidates for the Republican nomination, you would think that the economy is in the tank and the country is, is a mess. The data don't really back that up right now with the way that the economy, the Wall Street's going, uh, employment figures, the deficit, et cetera. Uh, but evidently, the, uh, quite a few Americans are buying into that narrative. If you look at the recent polls about his job approval, they're pretty low. Well, I think there's a big disconnect between uh, what you see in the broad numbers and what, uh, what various Americans feel in terms of the econ what the economy is doing. The stock market has recovered. Uh, the economy is gaining jobs, but it's not gaining them at the clip that, uh, that I think the president or anybody else would like. Uh, certainly, Americans don't feel that their wages are going up by and large. And so what you're seeing is a disconnect between the, the economy as measured by uh, how the top is doing and how the stock markets are doing and how corporations, which have uh, record, uh, record levels of cash uh, you know, at hand, uh, how they're doing and how everybody else is doing. And I think Republicans are very much going to try to exploit that disconnect. Well, I was going to say, you know, the, the, they've certainly exploited it a lot on the campaign trail. Do you expect to hear the same kind of, uh, of statements in the rebuttal tonight for the, from the Republican side of things? Absolutely. I think uh, Governor Nikki Haley of South Carolina, who's going to give the Republican response, the official response, is somebody who is, uh, who is of that next generation of Republicans, somebody who's seen as a uh, possible vice presidential shortlister, and somebody who will probably make the case uh, that Americans in states like South Carolina just aren't feeling uh, a recovery, and certainly to the extent that the economy has been getting better, I think she will argue it's not something that is getting better for everyone. So uh, I think that they're going to go after President Obama in that, and I also think they're going to go after him on foreign policy. Uh, right now, the Republican argument is that the world is ablaze uh, in places that the president has acted or chosen not to act uh, where there are, are big global, global hotspots. So uh, I think they're going to do a, a sort of uh, you know, left-right combo on them on domestic policy and foreign policy. Uh, you know, the president has an advantage speaking to a full room of members of Congress as compared to the person who does a rebuttal who's basically just speaking into a camera. Uh, oftentimes that rebuttal is uh, a little less energetic, a little less enthusiastic, a little less charismatic. Uh, but I do think the Republicans are going to try to speak with one voice tonight about what they see as the failure of the Obama administration and what uh, electing another Democrat in 2016 would do to the, the country in their view. Well, I think it's interesting what you're talking about because we just put up a polling data that shows that terrorism at 13 percent is the most important problem to Americans, according to this latest poll by CBS. But we know the president is going to talk about gun policy quite a bit, and that doesn't come in until about yeah. fourth or fifth down the page. Yeah, I mean, the reason that you don't see big gun control legislation in Congress is that there's no incentive uh, for members of Congress to vote for gun control legislation. There are certain members whose, uh, whose constituents don't want it at all, and even those uh, whose constituents do want to see gun control uh, oftentimes it's a, an issue that's much lower on the agenda, similar to uh, campaign finance reform. Uh, a lot of people want campaign finance reform. They'll support it in a poll, but th it's not really a passion issue uh, for, the, for uh, so many people as, say, uh, the economy writ large or terrorism right now. All right, John Allen, thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jamie. Stick with CBSN. We'll have full coverage of President Obama's last State of the Union address starting at 7 p.m. Eastern. His speech is at 9, and after that, we'll have full analysis.